to get to watch the LSU Alabama game? I watched maybe two possessions. That's about it. Okay. Saturday was not a lot of football, actually. Huh. Well, I will say this as, as incredible that game was, it just didn't have that juice that, just that. Yeah, that little extra juice that that game has when it's on CBS. It just – Herbie and Fowler are tremendous. I'm actually reading Herbie's book right now. But it, it just – it just felt like it was missing, that Alabama-LSU night game. That just That's just a game that belongs on CBS. But it was, it was an incredible game. LSU scores in, in overtime, goes for two. Brian Kelly just shows off his big old balls – his big old Cajun balls that he has. And now he, I think he might, he's a little more open to, he, he's got a little bit more of a Southern, Southern accent because LSU is family. You know, who, who would have thought in January after that big <laughs> Louisiana accent that his team would be seven and two and now um, in the driver's seat to win the SEC West. Not me. I mean, you're right, Dylan. You know, Brian Kelly, he is a giant, he's a giant prick. He's and he's an asshole. And I feel like he's all about himself. But that man can coach football. And yeah. um that was that was a special coaching job he did on Saturday because Alabama went down the field in that first drive. And it looks like, oh, they're gonna score. It's gonna be seven rip. This this game's gonna be, you know, 30, 31 to 14. Alabama blowout they get that turnover and then the, those Tigers they just believed they believed and a lot of freshmen made some big plays for them Jaden Daniels you know and Jaden Daniels I mean who saw this a month ago I mean Jaden Daniels he looked lost you know playing playing quarterback for LSU and now he's getting confident this coaching staff knows what he does well what he doesn't do well and Brian trusted him at the biggest moment in the game I mean how many coaches go for two at home if that game's being played in Tuscaloosa, I understand that. But when you're at home and then you have an opportunity to play the second overtime in front of your students, and that student section caused, what, three false starts on Saturday night? You know, 90, 95% of America would have would have just kicked the one and said, let's live for another day. But, you know, Brian had the right play call. Him and his offensive staff, they knew, they knew Alabama wasn't expecting them to give it to the 6'5 true freshman tight end. Uh, who who dad would? Is who would hall, be? Dad is a Hall of Famer. Which dad's makes a Hall us, of Famer. Makes us feel old because it's it, the dad is Jason Taylor, the D mm -hmm. DN for the Dolphins, and then his well, his uncle is Zach Thomas, too. Yep. But yeah, so it's not too, athletic of a family. Yeah, they're all. okay. Bunch I of mean, peasants. Only went to St. Thomas Aquinas High School. I mean, that's but that, what is that? The B Squad in Florida. Pretty much. It's not IMG. They were up 96 they, they weren't up 96 rep at halftime. It's Canada. Like I said, peasants. <laughs> and and we, we can't say it either. Bryce Young is a dude. And the only reason Alabama is in any of those games, just the plays that guy makes where LSU had him dead to rights like three or four times and he sneaks out and makes a play and just – the, the the level of calmness that guy has where he just doesn't get rattled. He's just so in control at all times. Mm -hmm. And if he isn't the number one pick, there's whoever the GM should be fired on the spot. Oh, he's he's gonna look good next year in a Houston Texans uniform. But <laughs> that's that that's for sure. And then hell, there's a chance they could get Will Anderson because they have they have someone else's first round. They have Cleveland's first round pick too. Yeah. 